Just take a look at these handmade porcelain ceramic gin bottles. Damn, they're just absolutely stunning. Let's see if these three South African beauties are as beautiful on the inside as they are on the outside. Hi guys and welcome to another episode of High on Gin. Before we get started, let me just say that if you like my videos, please help this channel and me by leaving a thumbs up and a comment below as any interaction between us helps enormously in getting approved and promoted by YouTube's algorithm. So thanks a lot, guys. But let's get started. Africa is one of the continents that really have seen the potential in a spirit like gin and has taken the classic gin recipes and paired with some of its uh, own very different and often very exotic local botanicals, creating a new type of gin that is often more floral and uh, a bit sweeter. A style uh, of gin that has been extremely popular with people around the world, of course. But even though that we have seen many new distilleries in South Africa, gin is not a completely new thing there. Going back in time, gin has been in South Africa. Well, probably since the first English settlers came to the Cape in 1806, but definitely since the first Anglo-Boer War in 1880, when the British military uh, started making the soldiers gin ration uh, locally in places like Stellenbosch. So, even though gin is not a new thing to South Africa, the new thing is that these, these, sorry, these local distilleries have taken gin, and then twisted it and incorporated these local botanicals and then gone globally with their products. And thank God for that. That is the reason why we sit here today. And Capes and Blaze is an artisanal distillery located in Muscle Bay, a town 400 kilometers east of Cape Town. And that is known as the place at which the first European uh, Europeans landed on South African soil. Uh, when the Portuguese explorer Bartholomew Diaz and his crew arrived on February 3rd, 1488. This area is known for its natural beauties and beaches, and Muscle Bay lies at the western end of a, of a stretch of scenic coastline called Garden Route, a bucket list route for many people around the world. This area has both uh, sandy beaches and a rugged coastline, farmland, majestic mountains, uh, forests and semi-arid deserts. And from a gin perspective, all this means that there is an abundance of botanicals and history and local craftsmanship to use when creating a series of gin. And Capes and Blaze did just that, really tried to capture the true spirit of the area by making three different gins here. The classic version, the floristic version, and then the oceanic version here. And common for all of them is this, this bottle here, this amazing handcrafted bottle in three different colors. Instead of just buying a mass-produced bottle, they decided to include the local community and make these bottles on location so that they could you know, stand together as a community and create uh, more jobs locally. And inspired by the iconic Capes and Blaze lighthouse in Muscle Bay, the distillery chose to make a slim and longer bottle with a little knot here on the top here. The lighthouse that it is inspired from was built in 1864 and at that time was one of only two lighthouses manned 24 hours daily uh, on the South African coastline. Until the late 1970s, a clockwork system turned the lens and, create, uh, and, and required a lighthouse keeper uh, to wind it up every three hours. And you see, a lighthouse creates a beacon of light that, light that gives, of course, security for sailors. And if you look at the distillery's logo on the bottle here, it may look like a star, but it's meant to illustrate a bird's eye view uh, of the lighthouse that creates these beacons. A process, uh, the process that goes into making these bottles here is simply mind-blowing. It takes up to seven days to make a bottle ready for use. 
You see, they take a liquefied ceramic porcelain mix and pour it into a mold. And after a couple of minutes, the shell is hard enough so that you can separate the mold and take out the bottle and leave it to dry for around 48 hours or two days. At this stage, the bottle is quite rough with a lot of unwanted edges from the mold. Each bottle goes through a process called fettling, where you cut off all, all uh, unwanted pieces. The bottles are then baked at a temperature around 1300 degrees Celsius for a couple of hours. And the funny thing is to see, uh, in the, for this, uh, about this process is to see how much a bottle actually shrinks. Uh, I think it shrinks in size like 30% or something like that when it's uh, finally baked. Every bottle is then thoroughly examined and hand sanded to create this super smooth and inviting texture. Every little single imperfection is uh, corrected and then the label is put on manually. And because each bottle is handmade, and even though they try to perfect each bottle, the bottle will have this, well, authentic handmade element or touch to it, which means that the opening up here or the hole here in the bottle um, can be slightly different. So they have to fit each cork to each bottle, which is why they also hand sand the, the cork to get it uh, to, to fit perfectly to each bottle. The color uh, of the bottles uh, come from the use of ochre. The distillery is located in the historic ochre barn uh, in Muscle Bay. It dates back to the 18th century. And in 1942, they were known as the first com uh, commercial ochre building in Muscle Bay. Ochre is this clay stone that you crush to create pigment uh, for color. Even the Bushmen used ochre to make their famous cave art uh, and some of the paintings found in South Africa are said to be more than 3,000 years old. And as a footnote, the bottles that does not pass the quality, uh, quality test is given to the locals so they can turn them into these beautiful hand-painted artworks that you can buy. But let's take a look at the inside of the bottle, at the gin itself. The classic gin here is their most, well, shall we say classic version, although they use several local and more exotic botanicals that you would normally uh, find in a classic gin. We're talking about botanicals like Carissa, Honeybush, that is this close cousin to the rooibos, wild rosemary, and toasted spices. You know, oh, in the nose you get both a crisp, the sense of this crisp lime, and the carissa, that is like an oversized, fairly tart cranberry with these overtones of apples and strawberries. But when you taste it, Every single flavor becomes much more present. The citrusy element, the herbaceous rosemary, and the elderflower, and this very beautiful flowery and exotic touch that this gin also has. It has a great balance of being slightly well, sweet and dry, but you know, without one of them being too much. As a gin and tonic, I would use a fever tree Indian tonic or a Mediterranean tonic and garnish a gin and tonic with a sprig of rosemary. Or if you like a more floral gin and tonic, use an elder, elderflower tonic uh, to boost the elderflower element in the gin. When we go to the next one, the pink floristic gin, the fruity elements takes a step up, so to say. Here, they have used botanicals like strawberries and grains of paradise, green rooibos, mint buchu, black figs, grapefruit peel, honey pistachios, and vanilla, alongside the more classic gin botanicals like juniper, of course, and coriander sweet, uh, seed. The smell is this very floral smell. It smells like a bouquet of flowers, where not just one flavor is dominating, but all of them creating this very harmonious floral smell. When you taste it, you get the floral notes, the sing from the mint, the aromatic grapefruit, you get the strawberries, but it's just to complement this pink floral expression that this gin has. And 
It has a very good foundation underneath it all with the use of green rooibos and grains of paradise and the, and the juniper here. As a gin and tonic, I would um, use a fever tree Indian tonic and garnish it with some fresh strawberries and a sprig of mint. And you could, if you want to go totally flower power and pair it with a fever tree rhubarb and raspberry tonic. This will give you a pink, flowery, summer-filled fruit bowl of a gin and tonic. The oceanic version is the third gin that they have made in this series here. This gin is made with botanicals that grows in the oceanic region, hence the name of course, like the salty sea asparagus, coastal lemons, the tartan lemony pelagonium, where 200 of the 280 different species worldwide are actually uh, native to South Africa. They use the sweet milkwood berry, one of the only trees that can withstand the salty ocean winds. And at the same time, is a very famous tree in Mossel Bay, known locally as the old post office tree, as it is considered to be the first unofficial post office in South Africa. You see, in 1501, Portuguese uh, navigator uh, Pero da Taide sought shelter in Mussel Bay after being attacked in Calicut in India, where he and his ships had to flee. And he wanted to warn another explorer, uh, João da Nova, of the dangers of going to Calicut and of the rough waters to the east. He left a note in an old shoe that he hung on a milkwood tree in Mussel Bay. And the message was actually found months later by Danova. The tree served as a kind of a de facto post office uh, for decades hereafter. You can actually see the tree even today. And the reason why this gin isn't uh, blue like the ocean, as you might expect from an oceanic gin, but instead has this beautiful clear brown color, as if it has been resting in a barrel, is that they have used the bittersweet sour uh, fig that they have dried and then soaked in alcohol together with botanicals like uh, orange peels, and then added the extraction to the other distilled botanicals. And cold brewed rooibos is also added to the gin here. You know, when you taste it, you get this very long and woody and earthy, sweet and, and quite floral taste combined with a spicy sing to it and this citrusy balance. I definitely get the rooibos in the gin here and this woody vanilla-like sweetness that it has. As a gin and tonic, again, I would use a fever tree Indian tonic and garnish it with an orange zest or simply just enjoy it neat with an ice cube. So guys, there you have it, a range of gin that you don't see every day, filled into some of the most beautiful ceramic gin bottles I have ever seen. So, if you like these more floral and exotic gins, Capes and Blaze Gin is a perfect match for you. I think my favorite, well it's difficult, but I think this, the classic version would be uh, my favorite, but you know, I could think of so many guests that would love these more exotic versions. And if you're so lucky that you're passing the distillery, don't forget to attend the gin school to create your very own version uh, of a, ca a Capes and Blaze gin, uh, gin. And remember to visit their restaurant as well. Until next time.